everyone, and welcome back to the Ellipse Unsealed podcast. As always, you have Bobby and I with you, um, but today we have a special guest, uh, Zach Marklew um, from Nigel. He focuses in the recruiting world, so he's going to share some of that with us today. Um, hi, Zach. Thanks for joining hey. us. No, hey, thank Zach. you very just much. Just to clarify, Arthur. it's Nigel and Frank. There are two of them. There's not, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Nigel yeah. Frank? Is that one guy? Nigel I, Frank. I yeah, yeah, Nigel Frank. It was there was right. two of them, but yeah, they they came together. Yeah, gotcha. No, right Nigel on. Frank. But no, good to um, good to have good to be on here. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, and full transparency, we talked about it before, but this is this is Zach 2.0. We we recorded one already. We've got it in the hopper. But uh, you know, we decided we just we weren't going to settle for you know second best. Savannah wasn't with us, so we're recording it again. And so we appreciate Zach having you back. Um, yes. nope. tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself just outside yeah, of no. Nigel Frank and what you do in well, life and where you outside are. Outside of Nigel Frank. Well, um, I'm, I'm originally from across the pond. Might be able to tell by my thick, uh, Southern Alabama accent there, but yeah, no, being, <laughs> being across in the U S for about eight ish years now, I've got a, a wonderful, uh, fiance who I am currently leaving down in Tampa as I'm doing a bit of traveling throughout the U S for some customers we were talking about momentarily ago. Um, yeah, no, being up in New York, I did here for five years and and uh, we, we moved down to Tampa to the, the Sunshine State, as they call it, which I thoroughly love. Um, I'm an avid soccer fan and uh, obviously the Euros are on right now. So yeah. come Wednesday afternoon, hopefully uh, England are pulling a bit further forward to, to, to bring it home. But uh, who knows? So yeah, no, um, yeah, avid avid sports guy. I've been in recruitment now for about 16 years. It will be my baby face. But yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm thoroughly looking forward to this podcast to further collaborate with yourself and the and the d365 ecosystem yeah so before we jump what's what's your favorite football club then oh some people may uh, not watch this podcast any further but uh yeah <laughs> liverpool <laughs> liverpool is my uh, liverpool is my club yeah all right have you got one um you know our our company they you know this is you know stateside but but, but i you know our company follows columbus because we're, we're so close to dayton Yep. Um, very good. And I haven't followed it enough to have a favorite. So I'm going to, I'm going to beg off and say no favorite. I'll go with the Rapids just as a, as a, as a football, as a, you know, a football, you know, cause they've been doing pretty well and got a guy going to the Olympics for the first time. So maybe second time in the Rapids history, wow. uh, guy named Georgie. I don't know if you, uh, he's, you know, been kicking it pretty well over here. So, um, so yeah, kind of exciting soccer times in Colorado, you know, for the moment. So. Right. Very cool. Um, that's awesome. Awesome. We were also talking about how busy you were and why you're in New York. So let's use that as a springboard to talk about kind of Nigel's, you know, what's, and we're going to talk a little bit about recruitment in general, but let's jump right into, you know, how you engage with clients. You said you got, you know, a couple of huge projects going on where you're, you're looking to fulfill a lot of jobs. And so we talk a little bit about your approach and how you work with end clients to get them matched up with the right, you know, opportunities. Nope. Uh, and thanks for for that kind of intro there on that. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're engaging with a number of different uh, end customers and partners in the community. Um, ISVs plug those in as well, obviously. Um, but yeah, the market the market's been good. It's been you know busy, and there has been a little bit of apprehension in the market around some of the economic uncertainty out there. But projects still need to get done, uh, be done. Sorry. So, and um, we're still seeing the needs from organizations, which is tremendous. And we're seeing Microsoft still. Um, you know, really taking away some of the market share from other competing products out there. And we're seeing that Dynamics is a product that many companies are intrigued and interested in, uh, you know, ensuring it's their own. Um, you know, ultimately, we collaborate with several, um, you know, CFOs, CTOs, IT managers, and try and comprehend their needs and align those needs with the right resources for their business. And, you know, I think the key thing is when identifying business needs, it's not about forcing something to somebody. It's about really understanding those pain points and trigger points. Um, and some of the strategies that organizations try to employ, which enables us to go and identify that right talent to fulfill those requirements. Um, and ultimately, I think the the marketplace today, it's a very collaborative ecosystem, it's, but it's a very small ecosystem. So I think um, in terms of our engagement with customers, it's been very um, fluid with referrals, uh, customers passing on our names to other organizations from some of the work we've done. But no, I think the, the key thing is, is, you know, when we're engaging with organizations is really understanding the need before we try and understand the, the solution, probably exactly the same as yourselves too. Uh, hopefully yeah. that gives you a bit of a, an insight there uh, in a nutshell. 
Yeah. So you mentioned CFO, CTOs, IT. I didn't hear HR in there. I assume you work like how does it, how do you work, you know, kind of snap into the HR department with an organization? Um, and do you find, you know, in, you know, w- when you're working with organizations that uh, you're meeting directly with those, you know, CFOs, you know, out of the gate or are you coming in through other channels? Um, so the HR piece to start off with, HR and integral uh, part of the hiring process for sure, especially when it's coming to culture. Um, and culture's changed so much since we've, you know, gone into the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic. And how can we actually engage with individuals culturally? I think that's a, a really key influential part that HR um, are being involved in right now. So no, we we definitely want to in, involve the HR um, business unit to some of the uh, the business ideas and strategies for sure. Um, and I think some of the the notable things I've seen from HR departments is giving some really nice guidance around, um, you know, notable noticeable shifts or changes observed from themselves as a business, which they can actually translate to potential job seekers. Um, and I think from a technical standpoint, a lot of technical individuals would just pick up on the technical nuances, whereas HR can actually bring a different angle to it. So you know, HR are very, very integral to, to a hiring decision. Um, I think your second question was, do we go straight for the C-suite? Um, I'd, I'd say I'd love to, because um, we get the signature done, done and dusted. And I'm sure we're all the same in the ecosystem. We've seen a bit of a, a delay in uh, signature as, as we, um, you know, are seeing a lot more approvals needed through um, through the hiring process and selling yeah. process of, of the platform per se. But no, we're, we're engaging with, you know, solution architects in the organization, project managers in the organization, uh, all individuals that have a, a key interest in a hiring decision. I think yeah. the, the key thing to say is, yes, it's integral to talk to the final decision maker, the CFO, the CTO, CIO, but everybody has their own say on what this exact job is. So I, yeah. I really want to gather the information from multiple stakeholders so we can actually bring the right person to you, um, not just what the CEO wants. Um, I think it's a real nice blended approach, getting everybody's thought process involved too. Yeah, it's a good holistic approach um, to, because like you said, it's, it's not just straight thing you've got culture you've got technical you've got a lot of different you know pieces you got to fit together to get the right fit because all at the end of the day you want to you know you want something that's going to be long term right so you know you you've matched up a person to an organization and the success is they've moved forward for a long period of time together and done done great things no for sure um, and and yeah. the the person who ends up getting the job they're going to be working with multiple people anyways so yeah if if it's just one person's decision then they're probably going to be, why did we hire this person? Like, why didn't I get involved in this decision-making yeah, right. process too? Yeah. So yeah, it's very, very important to get everybody's thought processes together on a hiring process for sure. Yeah, yeah, you bet, yep. Yeah, you have to make sure everyone gets along. And most of the time, people kind of lower on the chain will be doing more work with the person first hired rather than that high up person like a CEO or CFO. So that's a very good point to make. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Um, you kind of touched on this, but with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there was obviously multiple changes within the workforce. One of them being work from home was kind of mainstream and in- implemented. Um, do you want to kind of touch on that and how that kind of affected your recruiting processes? Gosh, how long have you got, Savannah? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, in we have the post- a hard stop at five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> in the post-COVID era, if we can call it that now, um, and it's actually quite funny. I was speaking to a customer the other day, and, and just for everyone's reference, it's the uh, the 9th of July, 2024. And they, they said to me, they have to still be vaccinated. So it's still a talking point in the, uh, yeah. in the marketplace today. And I was like, this was literally yesterday. So I was like, wow, OK. Uh, people wow. are still talking, um, you know, about this being a very important topic, which, you know, it definitely is. Um, but I think yeah. uh, in that post-COVID area, you know, we definitely observe several several notable market trends that have changed within the Microsoft um, landscape. Um, obviously, first and foremost, the remote working environment has significantly influenced these trends. Um, there's been an increased demand for cloud solutions. You know, the shift to remote work has accelerated that adoption of cloud-based solutions. Um, obviously, Microsoft Azure, Microsoft 365 is an integral part there. Um, I think organizations have realized, and I emphasize the word have realized, the importance of secure and scalable remote collaboration tools. Um, I think that's a really pertinent thing that organizations probably never really used to think of when it was four or five days a week in the office. Mm -hmm. Um, 
digital transformation you know it's definitely highlighted the need for digital transformation across multiple industries i think one thing i would say is that customers and businesses they're starting to leverage that um that transformation solution to automate processes enhance productivity drive further innovation within and i think one of the things i have noticed is the candidate pool and i put customers as well as job seekers in that everyone's really become far more in a themselves and it's really enabled them to stretch to the next level and pull them out of their comfort zone mm. um, but you know remote work has led to notable shifts you know the changes in talent requirements um, and sought after skills within the, the sector have really changed one thing I do push to customers these days who are still trying to fight for that um, on-site business analyst or on-site project manager is are you trying to hire on geography or are you trying to hire on talent? And I think the key concept that people need to understand is we need to be hiring talent, not just based on geography, because people can travel. Um, the world yeah. of remote working has has fully, um, fully accelerated. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the other key thing to it as well is people have got to or they've had to adapt to some of those changing needs. And that's not just changing needs in terms of their technical platforms, it's changing needs in terms of their employees. You know, people's needs have changed. So people have honestly had to go through a bit of a, how do you want to say, like change management or continuous learning process around their internal professionals and stay updated with the latest and greatest things that people want from a benefits perspective. Benefits yeah. have really, really shifted as we've come out of that. So it's not just the technical acumen, it's the benefits of change that people actually want today as opposed to what they wanted what is it now three years ago whatever it was so yeah, yeah four, um, maybe a bit actually, of a yeah. is it four jesus scary yeah it's um, crazy yeah. you mean you mean it's four years from when they said we'll see you in two weeks well, yeah. that's, the cra <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. exactly about right yeah it's yeah. crazy to think about how long but like you said it's kind of it's changed i mean like there was the main you know the beginning where in colorado we shut down all non-essential businesses shut down like it was done for at least a month before they started really you know cranking things back up. It's like from March to May, basically, there was very little activity. So that was, you know, companies that could work from home shifted. Others just had to shut down if you were, you know, production based or whatever. Yeah. And, and through the phase of, you know, now we kind of understand more about how this works. And then the phase of COVID is starting to flatten out and, and you know, the 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 um, the symptoms and the, and the the longevity of it. So, and but we're still, like you said, we're still in, a, in the next phase of it's still around. People still get COVID. It's still, you know, you know, st still in, you know, record numbers. People are, you know, getting infected. It's just not affecting them as much. And it's, but it overall, still, you know, there's all those phases still exist, um, yeah, which is crazy. No, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, Bobby, you just I, got it last year. <laughs> yeah, I've had it twice, uh, both traveling to Ohio. So, you know, every time I travel <laughs> to Ohio, to Ohio now, I'm, yeah. I'm bandaging up. Yeah. <laughs> Those um, are yeah. Uh, a couple of things out of that that was interesting, like, you know, things that shifted too, like pay scale, like where people were working in New York, getting a, a, a pretty high pay scale because of where they're living now living in, you know, you know, you know, boondocks, you know, Missouri, they're starting to adjust these pay, uh, you know, scales as well. Like, hey, you're no longer in the city. So, you know, the, the pay is going to be reflective of where you're actually living. So if you're remote, we're going to, it's going to be more reflective of where you're living as opposed to your cost of living in a, in a particular city that set in. And the other thing that's interesting is the ebb and flow and ebb of that remote work acceptance. Like you said, initially we had to accept it, like boom. The only way you're gonna stay in business is to let people work from home. But the people that hadn't gone through that change management philosophy, the minute that opportunity arose, it's like, okay, everybody's back to the office now. We need you back here because we're still not comfortable with you being out of our sight line, right? We need to see you at your desk at five working. And that's just, you know, still an old school philosophy that I think is still being challenged. It, it definitely is still being challenged. Um, but I think the, the key thing is, is within the Dynamics ecosystem, it, there is not an abundance of candidates just growing on trees. Um, mm -hmm. So you can't just ship somebody on a plane to go to another state. You know, people have got families to consider. Um, yeah. and, and it's not as easy as one, two, three. So. I definitely think there is a need for in-person collaboration. I'm not taken away from that, but I also think there is a need to understand that remote collaboration too. Um, for yeah. Sure. yeah. We probably talked about this, but Ellipse but pre-pandemic was mostly remote. I mean, the only people that came to the office were accounting. I mean, I don't think Mikhail even goes to the office, frankly, unless, you know, unless it's just, a, I mean, mostly it's the accounting department. Um, yeah, it's like three accounting. folks that are in the office. Yeah. 
that are in the office wow. regularly. The rest of our our staff, our entire you know BAs, everybody was working from home. So the pandemic didn't really affect us much or our business model or anything. It just you you, you know, made it you made it trendy years before. Maybe. Exactly, we were we yeah. were OG OG before it was <laughs> yeah exactly. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's that. I was trying to think of um, there was one other point I had in there. I was going to ask you about. Um, yeah, so yeah, so are you helping um, customer side uh, folks looking for employment? Are you helping to educate them on uh, remote work and and helping them to kind of make that change management piece as well? Is that something that that not not as part of like a like a a uh, like a you know you know part of your service, but just in general, is it something you find yourself doing? Yeah, we we are constantly educating customers on it. Some people or some organizations will listen and they'll understand the benefits of that remote piece and travel on site one week a month or whatever it may be. And some companies are fully remote. Yep, that's cool. Let's just do it. No no change here. And some companies are like, no, uh, we have zero flexibility, five days a week in the office, nine to five. Um, and yeah. just being transparent, those organizations and not finding people as quickly was, as the ones that have flexibility. Yeah, that was going to be my so follow-up. Like, what's the, the, what's the yeah, their, their response yeah, rate? So I, would, I would say that organizations that are looking for fully on-site five days a week, you know, you're probably looking at maybe a six-week search to identify somebody, but you're yeah. probably going to have to be flexible on the skill set as opposed to um, you know, the individual having every box checked. Yeah. Uh, and those organizations that are happy to employ somebody fully remotely, we're probably getting that filled in you know, 10 days. It's really, really quick. So yeah, um, yeah. if companies have the ability to wait, um, then perfect. I would you know, keep keep going with that. But the yeah. uh, the whole saying of time is money and what is, the, what is the pain point of not having this system fully working by not having the talent in place? Can you actually afford that cost? Then fair enough. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, there's very, there's, you know, there's different things that people have to weigh up um, to, to come to the final decision for sure. Yeah. Yeah um no it's an interesting one yeah what what about so you mentioned you know with, with the dynamic did, did you have something savannah no no right. no any follow-up on the on the remote work do you like working from remote i mean just just a question because you you've grown up with it i didn't so i like personally it was it took me a minute to get used to working remote like i hated it right yeah, yeah um not like it i mean my first job out of college was i went in, it was hybrid so i went in three times a week two times at home so it was kind of half and half and then going fully remote. Some days I miss just having people around and things like that. Um, I get a little stir crazy, but then other days I'm totally fine with it. So yeah. it's just a give and take. Um, I guess yeah. one question I did have, Zach, with um, the companies who do allow remote work and everything, do you find it hard to kind of, because I see sometimes on LinkedIn, it's like over a hundred people have applied to this one job. Is it hard to sift through all those? Do you ever find or? Is if it is fully remote? Yes, yeah. Is it hard to sift through candidate applications if the role's fully remote? I think um, I think within the Dynamics ecosystem, it is so niche. So I wish we could get 100 people applying to jobs. <laughs> yeah. um, but unfortunately, it's never, it's never as, uh, as easy as, as that. Um, I wouldn't be employed if 100 people applied to every job. Recruitment in the Dynamics world right. wouldn't exist. Um, but I do, I, you know, take away Dynamics or Microsoft, I think in more, um, you know, other roles out there, um, there is definitely, I think that, and I was speaking to a customer about this the other day, they were looking for more of a generic accountant and uh, they were asking, you know, how can we help? Because he's had over 600 applications and he hasn't got time to sift through all these candidates. And I said, ultimately, you know, that's the benefit of using a recruiter. We can do, you know, recruitment is a full-time job on the side of your other job. So that is why recruitment is so successful because we can ultimately uh, access these candidates and do the second job for you because I'm sure we can all admit when somebody says, hey, you need to start hiring, we put hiring on the back burner and carry on with our day-to-day -day job. So that's where recruiters can really, really add value and help you with that short listing, do some of the initial qualifications. What I do say to companies when they are you know, hiring for more generic roles, uh, and even our dynamics as result roles is is we want to get some pre-qualification questions that you as an organization want us to ask so we can screen based on these because not every company is screening on the same uh, you know four five six different criterias and then we can present that as a as a short list to you as a as a business so um yeah i think remote has enabled more applications but recruiters can really help you in uh, in shortlisting that down to a, a smaller nice shortlist of, of five or six candidates 
Um, and Savannah, to your to your point, I think on LinkedIn, I think you get you do see like when you see a job posting for Dynamics or whatever. I just think people start applying, and so those things ratchet up quickly. Like you'll see, yeah, a couple hundred people applying for a job. But but you, what Zach's doing probably, and what he's mentioning is that you're 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 being your criteria is so high that you're filtering right. much of that layer out down to the people that are actually meeting the qualifications right out of the gate. So it's a much smaller pool of, of folks to, to, to look at. Yeah. And I think um, that easy apply button that indeed and LinkedIn have created now is just, it's just a destined to fail because people just upload their resume and go bing, 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 bing. And yeah. they're yeah, to exactly. 30 jobs kind of, in a Like scattershot kind yeah. of, yeah. Just like, I need a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just wherever yeah. I land, it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, I think if you, if you can find a job off the back of that, well done. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, I think you should, if you're looking for a job, I think you should definitely tailor your, your resume or your cover sheet, whatever you want to call it to the job. Don't just, uh, as Bobby did it, kind of machined on your application. <laughs> yeah. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Come to Nigel Frank. We'll help you out. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, a shout out. there's ways yeah. to go about it. Yeah. I mean, I think this yeah. is the point. And I want to just, just talk a little bit about without giving away your state secrets. Um, you know, what what do you do? Like, how do you go about that process of matching up, uh, you know, client to customer or customer to client? Just talk, just talk through that process because that's the important part. Like you said, some some people might be comfortable just going out with the scattershot approach and just trying to get a job. Others want the you know want the right job because you might say, okay, I'll just get there and I'll get comfortable. Whatever it is, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And, but there's another way to go about it, which is to be really in, 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 you know intentional to say, hey, I really want these ten things are important to me, and how do we make sure I get these ten things? Uh, and so talk a little bit about what you what you do to to kind of match those things up. I think uh, no, it's a really valid point, and it's it's probably going to make me. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the boss doesn't look at this. Uh, this podcast is going to be grilling me on, on the processes, but um, I think I think the key things when I'm you know engaging with a customer for myself is, um, I guess it's maybe like three or four things. Active listening, you know, you've you've got to prioritize active listening. Um, you know, consult the customer, consult the job seeker. Um, you know, build workshops, meetings to enable you to. To have these active listening conversations, that will enable you know mm -hmm. us to really understand those pain points, objectives, and and real desired outcomes. I'd say, um, I think the the requirement gathering piece. You know, you use this on your side with your functional consultants as well. I think if you're if you're not going about requiring those gather, um, sorry, doing the the correct um, requirement gathering from the offset or you know, putting together the, the as you'd call it, the functional design documentation from the offset and really building that um, fit gap analysis of where the company is today, where, where they want to be to tomorrow, I think you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. So, you know, we've, we've employed many different techniques, um, such as interviews, surveys, workshops, which enable us to gather comprehensive requirements from customers. Um, and that will help us ultimately identify um, critical business needs and align resources correctly to, to find that talent. Um, and then I think the the other one, which a lot of recruiters don't do, and I'm sure, you know, Savannah, you mentioned you, you got this job start of the pandemic and Bobby, I, I know you've changed jobs over the years as well. One of the things that recruiters I don't think are good at is giving continuous feedback. Um, so mm. I think there needs to be a continuous feedback loop built into your conversations with customers. Um, so establishing that line of communication encouraging them to provide regular input, enabling you to give regular input on your on your search um, and share kind of evolving needs. You know, we talked earlier on about having several different stakeholders involved in the hiring process. I think it's really important to talk as a group weekly by weekly to discuss how those needs may have changed internally to find that that perfect talent for yourself. And that will yeah. in turn enable us to adapt our approach to um, to, to ensure that we can you know, provide the right resource allocations to get the right candidates to you. Um, I think on the on the candidate side, um, you know, we, we we kind of mirror the same approach. Um, it's you know, every customer is a candidate, every candidate's a customer at the end of the day. So we don't change the process differently for for both sides. But I think the key thing are those three areas. But the one I really do put an onus on is that continuous loop of of um, conversation. Because if you just take the job order or, or take, take the, uh, Hey, I'm looking for a job and you never call them again. Things change. Um, so yeah. I think that can, and it's probably the same for yourselves. It's continuous, <clears throat> continuous conversations with your customers to find, um, you know, the best solution for everyone. 
and I would just take this opportunity to, to remind, I think we talked about this before in person and in general, I know I've talked about it with, with a number of people, the best time to, to meet somebody like Zach, you know, and, and start this process isn't necessarily when you're looking for a job. I mean, just like in any, and in life, you know, the, you know, you, you know, go out and, and, you know, make friends with, with Zach now and, you know, see him at events and, and get comfortable or, or not Zach, the other Zach or whoever it is, but find, find your person and, and start to get to know them. And then that next step with what you're talking about, Zach, I think eventually carries on. It's easier to do that feedback loop because you've become friendly. And, and so you've, you've kind of gotten the person you like, and then when you're ready for them, boom, you're there and you're already comfortable with them. You're not spending two weeks of your recruitment journey, trying to find the right recruitment, you know, person or recruiting firm, because you've already kind of vetted that out through just through general life. And then, no, yeah, totally. then you, yeah, yeah. Then you're, you're, you're way ahead of the game. So you know, yeah. start now, you know, when you're out there, you know, if you're, you know, just, it's it, just by course of action, it's good to have, you know, folks like Zach in your corner. Yeah. I always say, you know, it's uh, you don't find your lifelong partner on the first date. So, well, you can do, but it's you, rare, you know, but sure. It's, yeah. yeah. But it's the same here. Like, you know, build a relationship for the future. And I always say to my, you know, folks here, like, you know, recruitments, there's so much more to it than just the bare bones of the job. It's actually changing people's lives. Um, and I always say to people, there's, there's five key things in somebody's life, graduating, buying a house, getting married, having a kid and finding a new job. Like whenever we're talking about a new job, everyone's going to, you know, their family talking about it, getting their friends advice and, you know, talk yeah. to your recruitment consultant to, to share and, you know, build conversation around it. Don't, um, as Bobby rightly said, don't just, Hey, I'm looking for a job. Can we talk now? Build the relationship before so yep. we know what to do in the future. Uh, and one question I always like to say everybody is, um, what, what is that, um, you know, paint that picture of that dream job for yourself. So when that comes about, we can talk about it and we yep. won't call you until that point. Um, but yeah, no, build that relationship from the offset for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to just jump back real quickly and say, I actually felt like I did meet my wife on the first date. I think she hooked <laughs> me pretty good, but she made a joke about my height that I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty gutsy to go you know, right for the height joke. You know, the first words out of your mouth. So I, I kind of knew that that kind of humor was going to sit well. So yeah, I actually, yeah. I, I, I take that comment back. I did meet my to be wife on the, on the first date. It was never, yeah. So yeah, well, actually, I guess we all meet our, to be partners on the first date. But, but the question yeah. is, you know, was it like many days after? Yeah. I was like, I, I was, yeah, it was like the first date. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is going to yeah, be the she, one. I mean, she I didn't go she by liked me after right. date one. I took a while for, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sure she'll, she'll, uh, she'll give me a little you kick. You definitely don't want to send the link to this yeah. one. Yeah. So, no, Savannah, so yeah, what about you? Were, yeah. were you a first date? Um, <laughs> oh, first did date? I, did I know after the first date? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we didn't have our first date till like a couple months after, so I guess I'd say so. <laughs> okay, there we go. So you met nice. and then had your first date. So you right. kind of did it. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the last thing, um, if I may do so, is, um, you know, with, with our process here at Nigel Frank, just to go back to it, is uh, we've built a fantastic database of some of the most amazing talent over the last 18 years. And that doesn't take overnight to build. Um, yeah. So, and, and, you know, going back to Bobby's point of become friends with your recruiter, talk to your recruiter, we've got 18 years of building relationships with people. So for those organizations trying to find these really, really tough to find candidates, then please, you know, reach out because we have the access to them. And if you're looking for a job exactly the other way around, we have access to some of these companies that you would never think that could be five minutes down the road from your house, um, but they actually are. So give us a call and we can help out for sure. Yeah, I think the keys again, like you mentioned, like almost like a project triangle. Like if you've got, you know, when you're looking at you want the right job, that's one angle, the time and, you know, and energy that you put into this, you actuates. And so you want to, you know, keep that in mind. So you're, you're going to accelerate your process. Like you said, 10 days to, to finding, you know, a particularly, you know, what could be a particularly you know, perfect fit for you makes a lot of sense um, as opposed to maybe spending weeks waiting for interviews and going through a process that, you know, is going to extend that or protract that, that, that opportunity. Yep. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And going back to the fact of kind of building a relationship with your recruiter, building a relationship with Zach, um, I know you're kind of involved within the Microsoft community. Um, what events and places can people find you at possibly? 
Gosh, I'm gonna have to uh, give a shout out for our uh, our Doug our Doug groups in Tampa. I've got to definitely shout out that one. Yeah. Bobby, I'm sure, will want to shout out his uh, his local Doug chapter too. Um, but you know, the the Doug events are fantastic. Um, I find um, people can be a bit intimidated to come to these Doug meetups. Don't be intimidated. It's like-minded people. Um, we normally have fantastic speakers from some of the the leading um, you know, partners and end customers who are going through probably some of the same challenges you've had as well. So yeah. definitely come along to these, share ideas, share knowledge. And if we share knowledge, we can all advance as an ecosystem. Um, and obviously there are other um, events coming up. We've got a community summit coming up in October, I believe it is in um, San Antonio, which should be really yeah. fun. Um, we just had our uh, Doug Live meetup in Denver, which was fantastic. Um, so that was really good. The altitude sickness wasn't too fun for some of uh, some of us, I'm sure. But so you got um, with I, that. I don't know if it was the beers or the altitude, but hey, I'll put it down <laughs> to the altitude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, this this there's some of the the fantastic um, groups out there. And if you can't make it in person, there's several uh, virtual online user groups as well that you can be a part of to help advance your knowledge within the ecosystem too, for sure. Yeah, it's good to see you out there too. I mean, I've you know I've seen Zach, like I said, he mentioned a number of them. Dallas, I think he met a number yep, of you right. in there, yep. which was interesting because then, and I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna forget the guy's name, but one of the one of the folks I met um, in Dallas, um, one of the sales managers, I can't think of his name now. His wife works for the city of McKinney, Texas, and they were at a a, a function for government agencies for financial officers, and I was walking through the networking event, I hear my name yelled out and I turn around and, and it's this guy. And he's like, ah, oh, I, I saw the, I saw the short guy in purple. I knew it had to be Bobby. And, and so we had a great conversation. So you never know where these networking things, cause I, you know, really didn't expect to know anybody at this, this event. It was all, you know, kind of cold networking. Um, so it was fun to kind of have that connection. So these, you know, the community events are great. You just, you just never know where you're going to run into folks and, and it's good to see folks like Zach at the event. Uh, and, and, you know, again, you know, I haven't been to one where it hasn't been 100% educational, great networking, great opportunity to learn and make connections. And like I said, uh, it's, it's the best time to make connections. It's the, you know, where it's no pressure, you get to know somebody slowly over time. And when you need them, whether it's a recruiter, an ISV, a partner, Microsoft, whomever. I mean, you, you've you've got this kind of you know this long term relationship already built, already in place, and and it makes it really easy to jump in and ask questions and and get help in whatever area it is you need. Yeah, for sure. Very good points. Um, well, Bobby, is there or Zach, is there anything else we want to touch on before we head into the rapid questions? I was about to say, is this the only podcast where we've not spoken about Copilot? Like, it's amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, and we're going to edit that. You just said Copilot. I'm editing that out right? it's, you know, it's in post. Uh, anytime, we <laughs> any mention of AI or Copilot gets edited out now. <laughs> or take a shot every time you hear it. <laughs> yeah, take a shot. <laughs> right. Boy, we'll be a lot of drunk people at the next summit. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll be a lot of drunk people at the next summit, but they'll be drunker even. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that in one of my sessions for sure. I'm going to I'm going to bring that up. <laughs> um, I think Good actually Bo and I when we did a session in Dallas, uh, I don't know if you're there for that one, but Bo and I did a session about support. And I think we mentioned every time we mentioned support, one of his one of his coworkers like, I, I think I'm gonna take a shot every time you say support. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, is that Bo Bo Schweizer? Bo Schweizer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Shout out. He's doing okay, by the way. He lives in Houston. I was like, I you know dialed him up yesterday. I was like, are you still you know is you're still intact? Is your house floated away? You know, that hurricane blew right through Texas and crazy. into Houston. Yeah. Safe. yeah. Thoughts yeah, to everyone out there. Crazy. Yeah, try living in Tampa with hurricanes. Yeah, I say, fun. yeah, it's, it's yeah. also another spot where, where you gotta yeah. always be on your toes there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's either yep. the snakes or the hurricanes. There you go. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah, love yeah. it. You're making a great, a great argument for people to move. It's like, hey, it's, it's awesome, except for the snakes and the hurricanes and the spiders <laughs> and the alligators <laughs> and, the, yeah. and the gators that you know come up to your door. Yeah. There yeah. you go. A quick fire. I'm ready. Yeah. All I'm right, you guys, ready for this? Yes, yes we okay. are. Okay, when do you wet your toothbrush? Before or after toothpaste? Both, before okay. and after. Okay. Same uh, with you, Bobby. Uh, I well, I mean, just after. I never wet it before, so always after. Same, same here. 
That's an interesting it question. An, it must be an English it. thing. Do it before. And after, <laughs> maybe yeah. it's just before, after, and then after again. I've, <laughs> yeah. heard, I've heard people do that. Um, what is the best joke off the top of your head? Oh my lord! I'm gonna let Bob knock, go knock. first. There. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. Who? Moo. Moo. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all I got. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Bobby keep that joke one. I haven't I haven't got any coming to the top of my head. Yeah. I have one that I always have on the top of my head. Um, my nephew used to be big into like jokes. He had a little joke book and everything. And the one he'd always say is, "How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it." <laughs> I just I can just hear it in his like five that's year a, old little voice. Five year old voice. That's great. Yep, 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 that's a good one. I haven't. I need more dad money. jokes. Yeah. I, I, again, I'm going to fall back to Bo, who's got all the dad jokes. I have zero dad jokes. I did. <laughs> I was just outside the realm. Of, I, I wasn't in the realm of dad joke era. So. Oh man. You Although I yeah, on the on the cuff, like I was in the thrift store the other day with um, with my kid, and 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 we were over the intercom. They uh, the person was announcing, you know, you know, you know we got the sales going on, and da 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 da. And uh, if you have minors with you, make sure they're with you at all times. And I said to her, I turned and said, is that because of all the dangerous equipment they carry, like the pickaxes and, and, you know, like, like ore miners, you know, like coal miners. And so she gave me the groan because it was, they were speaking about little kids, obviously. So, so on the cuff. Yeah. I'm still throwing out, you know, really bad dad jokes, but yeah, you know, gotta, it's it has to be in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not researching dad jokes behind the scene right now. But, yeah. <laughs> Can we ask that question again, please? Roll the tape. Yeah, roll yeah. it again. <laughs> um, okay, my last question is, in your opinion, what goes on your perfect hamburger? Mm. Uh, I would say avocado. Mm. I'd like a fried egg or a sunny side up egg. Lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is an English thing. I like mayonnaise. There I grew up go. having mayonnaise on a hamburger, so it, it uh, okay. definitely moved over the pond to, to my house. Yeah, same. There we go. <laughs> but growing up, I, I for some reason, like if I were to say classically, like if, of all the hamburgers I've had in life, mustard only. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. I love. Take. I do love mustard, and it was just for the longest time. That's all I didn't. I never <laughs> liked ketchup. So I'm not a ketchup person, mm -hmm. uh, but like the mayo, um, definitely savory. But the, the 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 mustard is just that kind of tangy, and I just got used to it. And so yeah. I'll, I'll gravitate. I'll gravitate. Yep. Mayonnaise on pizza is an English thing. There you now go. that I haven't tried, just yeah. the whole like <laughs> dip the cheese crust, and everything, dip the crust, just the crust. The crust, the crust, the crust I could see. Yeah, the crust oh, I yeah. can see. Yeah. Yeah. But on it's the cheesy part too. I'm I'm gonna admit I have done that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. Give it a go. I mean, Let me know how it mayonnaise is. Mayonnaise is good. Yeah. Do, what do you have a favorite mayonnaise brand that, that you go to here? Hellman's. Yeah. Hellman's. Okay. Hellman's. Yeah. Hellman's, that was what I grew up with. Yeah. I've been trying out Dukes though. It's a pretty good. Okay. Richer alternative. Yeah. Pretty good yeah. one. I made it myself at home once. wasn't too good. So. Yeah. I've seen it just like eggs and oil, and you just blend it oil. so it turns into mayonnaise, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Never yeah. tried it, but it seems like it would be fun. Yeah. It yeah. Doesn't, doesn't cool. taste the same. Must be the chemicals <laughs> I put in it. Yeah. We're missing the chemicals. Yeah, just add some there chemicals. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it good. Cool. Uh, I would say I would like some bacon on my hamburger. And then, yeah, okay. mayonnaise, uh, ketchup, mustard, pickle. I forgot about bacon. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I do like there bacon too. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like when the hamburger is so tall that, you know, I have to you know, mush it. I don't, I'd like, yeah. I really, I'll gravitate to that. Just give me that. Straight up burger. Just mustard. There you Just go. mustard. Yep. But I do yeah. love bacon. Bacon's a good one. I mean, I, I I certainly will throw some good bacon on that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. I forgot that on the perfect burger. Thanks yeah, for reminding me. Grilled onions. I'm gonna get grilled onion, tonight. Grilled onions too. Yeah, you're making me hungry too. I'm gonna just like <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, I'm out my, now. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> get that burger. <laughs> oh gosh. Well. That's all the questions I have for you today. So perfect, love that. Um, thank you very much. But yeah, Zach, we'd like to thank you for taking the time again to just sit down and chat with us. Uh, we thank know you're you very both. busy, so yeah, we'll re-record this next week. So we'll talk to you again. 
And uh, yeah, <laughs> one of these days we'll actually broadcast one of the podcasts. There we go. We together. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. We actually well, no, just it's been a pleasure. Today. Thank you <laughs> yeah. so much. Yeah, no, really appreciate your insights on on recruiting. It's an important thing. I mean, it, it's it's out there and people are you know, using these services. And I think it's good to hear from somebody who's doing it full time and, and get some insight on on what they're doing behind the scenes to make it effective for both parties. So, yeah, I really appreciate appreciate your insight on it. Nope, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, cool. thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah.